David Ford, you have um, announced that uh, tomorrow, lunchtime, you'll be resigning as leader of the Alliance Party. Um, assuming the men in grey coats, who you've talked about before, um, didn't come for you, why choose this moment? Well, just earlier this week, I put on the grey suit myself and went and told my colleagues, no, the position is that tomorrow is the 15th anniversary of my election as party leader, which creates a nice round number for me, and I've always been slightly mathematical. It's also the situation that we have the new assembly team in place, well established, individuals showing leadership in their committees, in the chamber, and in their constituencies, and a lot of private members' bills underway. So it's right now that somebody else should get the opportunity to take up the baton and lead the, the next step forward for the party. And over your 15 years, um, there's been quite a lot that's happened politically. As a party, you have, um, you've kind of had a surprise MP, you've had um, two surprise ministries. Um, what do you think should be the legacy as they look back over the, the 15 years? What's the legacy of your period in charge? Well, personally, it's hard to pass by the fact that I had the privilege of being the first local justice minister for 38 years. And that was something which was you know, immense pride to me that I was able to play that part you know, be a key member of the team that saw it was possible to devolve the issue that was too difficult on Good Friday. There have obviously been plenty of highs and lows for the parties generally, certainly seeing Naomi elected as MP for East Belfast. You say it was unexpected, those of us who were knocking doors in East Belfast didn't think it was that unexpected. So that was a significant high. And I've also contrasted today the lows of the difficulties around the flags dispute. You know, the threats, the attacks on colleagues, their houses, their offices, and the high of the way people stood together there, stood by their principles, stood for the shared future we believe in, and didn't bow to that kind of intimidation when it would have been so easy for that to happen. Um, electoral growth has been kind of fairly steady, it's, it's mm -hmm. been kind of low level, um, mm -hmm. so you haven't had any kind of breakthrough in that 15 years. Uh, Sorry, is electing an MP not a breakthrough? Well, in, well, in terms, temporary thing, though, yeah. In, in, well, it was a temporary thing until a fi you know, because a five-party pact by people who disagree with each other, you know, mm -hmm. then um, evicted Naomi. But we'll see how things go with the new boundaries. For, but overall, in terms, said, of MLAs, in terms, in terms of number of MLAs, in terms of number of MLAs in councils, we we've steady. seen modest, steady growth. I actually think when you look at other people, uh, that's not bad. We're actually the only party which since 1998 has never lost an assembly seat. Now, OK, we haven't made massive gains, but we've seen that steady growth. And we have moved from a position, which I remember in 2003, we had six seats, but there were only three of them were really safe, to the point where all eight were safe this year. And indeed, there could have been another two, three, maybe even four if we stretched it. We just didn't have that particular lock this year. Um, any regrets over the 15 years? I mean, politics is a, it's a very dodgy game. Does, does any politician ever admit having regrets? Um, they should. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes, if you look back, you can think we might have done something slightly different. We might have you know, made a bigger difference there. I really don't think, though, that we have any significant regrets. I think we've had the opportunity to make our mark, that we've clearly stood out as a party with a different philosophy, a different background. And I think that is shown in the way that we've you've conducted ourselves and the way which we've had that admittedly modest growth that you talk of. It's not easy being a party that's kind of in the middle, but that, that kind of 10%, that um, fitting in between the left and the right, between unionism and nationalism, it's a tricky space to occupy. Are you happy that Alliance has made enough, um, kind of made enough of that position and done enough with that? Well, it's one of those things, on, on the one hand, you might say that in a society as divided as ours, to have had even that modest growth to be the largest bit of the 10% uh, that's neither unionist nor nationalist is an achievement. On the other hand, you know, given all the divisions of society, on the other hand, you might say, well, we should have gone a bit further, a bit faster. In, our, in the first assembly, we designated ourselves as centre. But since 2003, we've used the designation United Community because actually we're not just stuck in the middle between other people, we're standing for a different alternative vision from the one that they have. And for uh, 22 minutes or something, you three of you designated as unionists? For well. 22 minutes, three of us pretended to be unionists to provide stability for this community, to provide the opportunity for David Trimble and Mark Durkin to lead an executive, which sadly only lasted about a year. Do you ever think that if you hadn't done that, things would be different? It's one of those things that you can look back on. I actually think it's very difficult to see how things would have been better if we hadn't done that. There wasn't the mood to make the fundamental changes that were needed at that stage. That said, we made it absolutely clear that whilst we were prepared to do that once, we would not do it again. There needed to be more fundamental reforms. It's almost the same as uh, 
we provided them with a justice minister in 2010 when the DUP and Sinn Féin wanted us to provide them with a justice minister because they agreed to the proposals we put forward at that stage. When they didn't agree to things that we thought were absolutely necessary, both around the working of the Assembly and the Executive and around changes to society, then we didn't provide them with a minister this year because there was no point in being in an executive just to occupy a seat and not have the real opportunity to make fundamental changes. The, a new leader will, will, will take over in about three weeks' time. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll have, have an election. Um, what kind of challenges do you see for the party going forward? I mean, you'll not be in the driving seat, but um, what do you think are the, the next kind of hurdles that will have to be addressed? Are you encouraging me to be a backseat driver? Oh, only, I, only, yes. only while you're still the driver, after tomorrow lunchtime. OK, after right. tomorrow lunchtime. Um, I think the challenge will be to continue to put forward our proposals for building a united community to make a real difference to the society. There's clearly much to be uh, criticised in the way the current executive is conducting itself. The challenge will be to do it in the context of a different alternative vision and not just nitpicking around minor details. We can join with others on some areas, but I think we still have a unique vision, which is the Alliance vision and only the Alliance vision. Um, there are probably three things you're not going to talk about today, and one of them is who you think should be the next leader. That's the, the choice of eight, the, but the, seven of the, you're not in the... In the um, well, it, it was pointed out to me that actually technically there's eight, but I'm not putting my name back into the hat. You're not a Nigel so Farage, you'd like to come I, I am definitely not a Nigel Farage, so it is the choice of party council, and uh, it's not going to be a coronation on the 26th of October. Even if there were only one candidate's name put forward, they still have to be seen to have the confidence of party council. So 50% plus 50 one. 50% plus one, plus one. one. yeah. That's what I have achieved every year since I was first elected. Um, I, I, imagine I think I imagine slightly more than 50%, yes. yes. Um, but the, the other two things you probably don't want to particularly comment on, but you kind of need challenge on it really will be, are you giving any commitment as to how long you're going to stay as an MLA for South Antrim? Well, I did have a significant birthday this year, so you know, well, you're aware I've stepped down from the, uh, the Ministry of Justice as well as the, uh, the role in the party. Mm -hmm. um, I have plenty to keep me occupied at the moment having been on the Agriculture and Environment Committees in the First Assembly, and the only person who was on both, I'm now on the Agriculture and Environment Committee. And it's interesting, after sort of six year gap, to, to get back involved in that. I clearly still have an ongoing issue around some matters around justice. Um, even since I became uh, a backbencher as opposed to a minister, I've had more opportunity to engage with matters in the constituency, which do get somewhat neglected if you've got a busy ministerial diary. And as you know, I've got a private members bill planned, which I hope to be introducing shortly to deal with abortion in the case of fatal fetal abnormality. So there's plenty there to keep me going for a while. But beyond next summer, do you think you'll still be? Well, if you think, if you think all those things are going to be done by next summer, you're more optimistic about procedures in this place than I am. Um, ultimately, though, in terms of succession planning, you know, as being a party leader, that your constituency, there's the one of you rather than mm -hmm. two or three MLS. So it needs to have profile. Somebody else will need to develop their profile and, and be, be known to the constituency. Well, exactly. And it, but even today, I spent time at the, uh, bar, at the Boundary Commissioner hearing, and clearly there, there is going to be a very significant change, whatever happens, mm -hmm. to South Antrim constituency. So it's not even looking for a successor, it's potentially a matter of looking for two successors for two different constituencies. Um, Colin Eastwood um, this afternoon said that you led your party with composure and resilience, particularly in the face of violence following the flag protests. And he added that um, you had a dedication to democracy and the rule of law. People are so sweet um, once you're once you're going. But did you, do you recognise that that was is that part of your was that part of your leadership? Well, I quite honestly haven't had the time to read everything that people have said about me over the last couple of hours. I think it's actually a, a very gracious uh, comment from Colm. Uh, I hope he said it because he meant it. And I'm sure he did. Um, and I hope it's a reasonable reflection. It's a bit like the day I stepped down from Antrim Council when I became a minister. Um, I went to the meeting and people from every party uh, paid tribute to me and said nice things about me and I wondered why I hadn't resigned from the council years earlier. But you know, that's the reality. In this society we tend to fight each other while people are in post and then we recognise things differently, as indeed a number of journalists have done even in the sense of text messages over the last couple of hours. So I hope that there's something there that people can say that Alliance stands for something, that I had the pleasure of being the leader of that team that the Department of Justice achieved things in six years that were perhaps more than some people thought would be possible. And I had a, a role to play in that with the team between the party and the department. So maybe history will be kind to me. And if you're offered a period in a year or so, it's time. Oh, not that you? old one. I well, can't call it's, it out. As an outgoing party leader, I mean, would, you I, would you turn it down? I, 
well, I have made it clear the last time I was offered a peerage was when David Tribble was trying to do a deal around a Westminster election. Uh, my commitment is to the people of South Antrim who sent me to the Assembly five times to the work that has to be done in Stormont. I really am too old to think of jumping on a plane every week to go to London.